I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Oh. Amen. 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 I offer you as a word today that this belongs to you. Colon, the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. 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 Right where you are. Gracious and eternal Lord God, we say thank you. Amen. Thank you for this piece of peace that allows a sanctuary to open our hands and our hearts, our mouths and our minds, and to let go of that stuff which held us down this day, this week, that tries to in this life that we might be poured into fresh today, fresh oil, fresh water, fresh anointing. For this and all the things you do so well, Lord God, we say thank you. As you speak to our own particular circumstances in your own special way, speaking our own language, we say thank you. For this word, we say thank you. For its edification in our hearts, minds, and lives, we say thank you. And that is why, without one doubt, we scream and we shout that we keep on trusting. For your word is true. You've already done what you said you would do. Ashe, amen, and so it is. Amen? amen. This conversation, amen, it's going to be more conversation for how, yeah, amen. This conversation is not about how much time you spend on worrying. It's really about how much energy you spend worrying. And what else you could or should be doing if you weren't using that energy to torment yourself, seize yourself, harass yourself, and avoid the life God has for you. And you say, Pastor, why would you use such strong language? Because according to Wikipedia, worry is thoughts, images, or emotions of a negative nature in which mental attempts are made to avoid anticipated potential threats. According to, you need that again? Okay. Worry, you think worry is some slight, simple thing, but its actual definition is thoughts, images, and emotions of a negative nature. So you're already working from negative. In which mental attempts, so you ain't actually doing nothing, in which mental attempts are made to avoid anticipated potential threats. Now, its actual definition goes even deeper to worry to torment oneself with or suffer from disturbing thoughts, to fret, to move with effort, to torment with cares, anxieties, to seize, especially here, this is the one that scared me to death in hearing it, to worry is to seize, comma, especially by the throat, with the teeth, and shake or mangle, as one animal does to another. Wow. To harass by repeatedly biting, or snapping. Oh, what energy we use worrying about the cares of life over which we have no control in the first place. But in order to get you out of worry and a state of worry, I have to make sure you have the energy and the education, if you will, to walk into this thing and glean out of it what Jesus said. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. And that's an almost undefinable, indescribable thing if you don't really break it down. Is it, as according to some faiths, the individual state of being? Is it the state of the world? 
what does this elusive kingdom of God mean and how do you get it? Huh? When asked about this same thing in the book of Luke at 17 chapter, Jesus said this. He said, once having been asked by the Pharisees, see the teachers come at him trying to trick them. <laughs> when is the kingdom of God coming? Jesus replied in Luke 17, 20, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation. Nor will people say, here it is, there it is. Because the kingdom of God is within you. This is Christ. This might sound a little existential, but he said it's in you. Then he said to his disciples, the time is coming when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man but you will not see it. He said even to his own disciples, while you were walking with me, worrying with me, wailing with me, toiling with me, there's going to come a day when you wish I was here and you won't see me. But you got to seek first the kingdom of God that's in you. He was transferring power to them. Huh? When your mama showed you some things when you were growing up, she was showing you because, baby, there's going to come a day when I ain't going to be here to do this for you. But I need to know today that you know that you know how to get it done. Some of these strong women in here are strong because you had a strong grandmama who took your a, a uncle who knew you before you knew yourself and said, let me show you how to chop wood. He didn't say, I know you're a girl and you shouldn't know how to do this. He saw something in you and about you and said, I need to teach you now because the world out there ain't going to be so kind to you. Seek first the kingdom of God which is in you. Know yourself first. Some of the conversations we had with some folk back in the day is because they knew us yes. first. Yes. My mother told me to cook at nine because she said, I know you. Yes. You ain't like my other sons. I'm going to teach you this yes. now. Yes. So when you step out in the world, I'm going to teach you how to walk with your head up, my Aunt Gladys taught me, so you know now. Yes. So when they try to rebuke you and choke you, yes. you're very clear that they're coming after you because they see something in you. I wish I could get everybody who's being harassed and harangued to realize haters don't bother you because they can't stand you. They bother you because they can't stand you. They can't take you. They can't tolerate the way you show up in the world. You think you just put on a tie to match your shoes. You think you just walking around with blonde hair. They can't stand that you have the mitigated audacity to live a authentic life. And Jesus said, I'm trying to get you to get this now. Seek first the kingdom within you. Plant the seed and let it bloom within you so that when you show up in the world, the rest of the stuff you need can show up at the proper address. The reason a lot of us haven't got what we've been praying for God for is because we're praying from mama's house and sitting in our own house and the package keeps getting misdelivered. Seek first the kingdom of God within you. What is your life about? What's your purpose about? What is the thing that you've come to do? Seek that first. Get your life first. Live your life first. And I know this might sound rough to some or simplistic to others, but if you let it, peace will pour into you if you can catch this thing, that you've got to do your best you first before you can pray for a thing. You've got to be good even when people in your own house, in your own bloodline, in your own family, even when they would dare come against you. You've got to know in your heart. See first that you are not an accident or an incident. Seek first that you are here on purpose, with purpose. Seek first that you didn't create this shade of brown. There is no a chemist in Max Factor who can blend your skin to the right shade. Nobody can. Nobody ain't no amount of padding in the store to do your hips like you do it. There is no amount of silicone that can make your lips succulent and juicy. Huh? You see people who have tried to do cosmetic versions of you. They try to pad on hips and punch in lips and they look as full as yours but not as succulent. Not as juicy. Not as powerful and purposeful. Some about the way you fry, die, and lay to the side. Your hair is unique in and of itself. Something about the way your booty moves when it's in the right jeans, walking down the right street. People try to choreograph dances around it, and they just can't get it. You got to seek you first. Do you first. Like you first. I know we talk about loving, but like you first. Seek first the kingdom of God.
and all its righteousness. Because God is a righteous God. He said, I'm going to take care of you even when they cast you asunder. I'm going to take care of you even when they throw you out. I've got you covered even when they rebuke you. Even when they say your name ain't on the list. How are they going to say your name ain't on the list when I hold a pen? Seek first the right relationship with God, which is in you. And all its righteousness, and then all the rest of it will be added to it. If we're not careful, we will let people convince us that the word of God as made manifest in the life of Jesus Christ, especially spoken through the Gospels, is not applicable to our lives, our times, and our struggles. We get convinced that his parables and his teachings were not able to walk us through the dramas and the traumas of our modern lives. But the truth, as spoken through the truth, hello, right I'm the way, the truth, and the life, was as on point then as it is now. Don't look for your blessings through other people. That's what, don't do it. People will get you every time. People will hold you hostage if they realize you're looking for something from them. Anybody ever got a conditional approval from, I don't mind you being like that, just don't bring it around me. That's conditional. And you can't live an authentic life around people who give you conditional love. Huh? He said, don't do that. It'll weigh you down trying to get approval. If you want people to really see how bad you are, do you so well that they can't help coming after you. Shorty, I, I just want to say I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for the soldier you are. I'm proud of you for the makeup artist you are. That's my face on my way. I'm proud of the student you are. I'm proud of you because you did something I didn't get to do. I didn't know how to leave this world behind. I didn't know how to leave this confined behind. I didn't know how to leave the hood behind. I didn't know how to leave stuff behind. And I see something audacious in you. The fact that you can rock a suit on a Sunday morning instead of putting on one of them sanctified suits I used to put on. The fact that you can put on all that hair when I was afraid because I was born in the apostolic faith and I used to just put a kerchief. The fact that you can walk in heels like that. The fact that you can raise that child like you did by yourself and it didn't kill you. It didn't make you hate other people. It didn't make you stay lonely. It did not push off. They are looking at you. You are the next level of, of greatness in your family. And as much as you keep playing small, trying to appease and get approval from them, they are looking at you to get big and bad so they can have an example in their own lifetime of what great looks like. You keep wanting your mama to be Jesus. Well, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Your mama keep fighting you because she keep waiting for you to come off the cross and be resurrected. Mama, you thought you killed me. Bam. Not dead. Yeah. Now what? Now what? Somebody in here got razor burns and bullet fragments in your shoulder and you ain't dead. Now what? Seek first the kingdom of God and all this righteousness and all this will be added unto you. This thing, this link, this life, this gift, they belong to you and when you honor them accordingly, they will bless you accordingly. Huh? Remember that scene in the color purple? Hmm? When Miss Seely was in the woods, she was shucking around the corner, and Sophia stomped through the woods and said, you told Harpo to beat me? Remember that? Watch, it's going to work in this watch, huh? She says, I ain't about to deal with that kind of foolishness. And Seely says to her, this life be over soon. Heaven lasts always. She said, Heifer, you better bash Mr.'s head in and think about heaven later. But God doesn't intend for you to get to heaven today. I ain't supposed to be in heaven today. I'm going when God says so, not because awful beat me upside the head and in my life. So I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God. Boom! I'm leaving Harpo before I let you kill me. Before I let you kill me, I'll leave out here with my sister. You understand that thing? He says, seek first the kingdom. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I didn't come for you to endure somebody beating you. I didn't come for you to have to tolerate somebody talking about you. I didn't come for this, and I gave you the power to get up and walk away. And it might hurt, but it ain't going to hurt more than that next hit to your head. It ain't going to hurt more than the next time they kick you while you're down. It ain't going to hurt more than the next time they break your spirit. And before I let them kill you, I'm asking you, I'm commanding you to walk out now. Walk out in righteousness. Walk out in your fullness. Walk out and don't look back. Huh? Because if y'all remember, Harpo came looking for Sophia. Sophia ain't no looking. It's too much, is it? I'm sorry. I know this might feel a little existentialist, a little cerebral, but it's a real thing. Jesus said, seek first your best life. 
Do what the Father called you to do. Do what you were put together. Do you realize how many spermazoids fought to be you? Huh? He thinks fought to be you so that you could collide at the right time and show up on the earth for such a time as this. And that thing is real. Jesus was saying it and is still saying it today. If you're going to use energy, use your energy to create your best blessed life. For you, in you, around you. And from this place, ask and receive. Seek and find. Knock and watch it open. Huh? But that means you've got to stop letting life come at you some kind of way. People often, because some writer put it together, say fear is false evidence appearing real. That is a lie. Because when somebody coming at you and that fear kicks in, they right in front of you. That's not false evidence. They are actually coming at you. They have actually changed the color of your mail from white to yellow, yellow to pink. It's not false at all. What I declare fear is, is facing every action reactively. Which means you wait to see what they're going to do before you do what you're going to do. That's real fear. Do I show up today? What if they talk about me? What if they don't like the way I dress? What if I'm too black, too dark, too tall? Too, they, anybody you think is talking about you is talking about you. Right? Anybody that you believe has something to say about you, in all likelihood has something to say about you. You can't stop that. What you can do is give them something to talk about. Who does she think she is? You see her yesterday, she walked in here in a new dress, and the day she got on new shoes. Who does she, the last week she was about to get set up, now she's bringing in new furniture. Look at her, last month she ain't had no job. Now she walked down the street with a briefcase like she thinks she's better than us. Look at her, walking around here with a uniform on. What, she thinks she in charge of something? I promise you, you can't hire a better PR firm than your haters. Hello? You can't hire a better PR firm. You want to get something done, throw a flyer down by your haters house and the whole block will go before you get what you got. Say that, Huh? Because your job is to do you. And then all the rest will be added unto you. He says, this belongs to you. Once you are walking down the street of life, the $20 will show up on the ground. Once you are walking down the path you're supposed to be on, the thing that's waiting for you will meet you down the street. It's waiting on you. Stop sitting still waiting for people's approval so you can get busy living. Get busy living. Then get what God has for you. And people who was talking about you last week will all of a sudden start approving. You know we friends, right? You always been my boo, right? You my road dog, right? You know I love you, right? When they was talking about you, you know I had your back. That's why I was around, because if I wasn't around, there wouldn't have been nobody on your side. The journey of life, if you live it well, will show you this thing belongs to you. And you can't get it till you get to it. Huh? It don't come UPS. It don't come FedEx. It ain't going to come to your door knocking. It's going to meet you while you march and meet you with your head up and your shoulders square. It's going to meet you when you believe in yourself. Huh? That's how Lena used to sing that song. You said, believe in yourself. Woo! When you believe in yourself. When people catch you walking down the street, walking like you're going somewhere, and you're just going to the corner store. Huh? We're going to have a funeral for the word just today. Don't just do nothing. I ain't just sitting around here chilling. I ain't just going to the corner. Don't just do anything. Somebody asks you what you're doing today, and you've decided to take care of yourself fully for the day and spend time with yourself. Say, I'm chilling. I'm relaxing. Don't say, I'm just here. I'm just going to the store. I'm going to sustain the best body I ever had. I'm going to get some nourishment for my fabulous self. You've got to start injecting fabulosity into your life. So when people see you coming, they support the language of you. Huh? Somebody got a new house. Just walk to the front door in your robe and slippers and stand there like Ward Cleaver. Hello. <laughs> So the packages can say, oh, there's Peggy Miller's house. Oh, there's Juanita Wilson's house. Boom, it just starts showing up. But in order to do that, you can't be scared to live your life. Huh? You can't be scared. I remember watching this show or this video online one day where these kids in high school were doing this news report for the school news, right? And this boy decided he was going to do this trick, right, where he uh, had some monster hiding in the trash can, and he had these people right here interviewing him, and midway through the interview, somebody would pop, 
Yeah. Then they would pop out and people would scream and they'd run. Yeah. No, no. And then one day he was talking to the dude and the boy popped out and the boy hit. Boom! Hey! hey. Hit the monster in the mouth and the monster fell down. Let me tell you why this thing is applicable. When we were growing up in our little two apartment tenement, two room tenement, huh? Every once in a while, you would know, we would have gridlock in the house, huh? Somebody would bump into somebody, huh? Uh -huh. Mama had four boys and herself, hello? And every once in a while, a brother and another brother would come around the corner at the same time and scare, ah! And my mama was saying, now see if he was living right. Because yeah. 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 a whole lot of us get scared in our own houses. I wish somebody did me. Get scared walking down a dark street, I get that. But some of us get scared and I don't, hey, hey, hey. And if you're living the best life, you can't, can't nothing come and scare you in your own house, huh? Huh? It can't scare you in your own house. Anybody in here ever found $20 in your mama's house? Oh, look, mama, I found some money. Not in my house. You ain't find no money in my house. I am going to say thank you. I wonder where that was. You can't get scared in your own skin. You can't be so afraid of being audacious that you let other people engage you in such a way that they tell you who you're supposed to be. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, you know that already, because every once in a while, you go out of town and sneak the version of yourself onto yourself that you want to be. Every once in a while, somebody throws the right function at the junction, and you say, I'm breaking out these heels. I'm bringing this dress out of captivity. And the way you know for sure that you have some bad to the bone in you is that the dress is in your closet in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, you got work for somebody? Yeah. If you weren't trying to work on this version of yourself, this diva in disguise, this man amongst them, you wouldn't have ever bought the dress. It would have stayed on the shelf. You wouldn't have bought the heels, and then you put them on by yourself and say, they too high. I can't wear these in front of people. I look like a hooker. Are you a hooker? No, you're not. So redefine hooker and change what people think are high heels when you struggle in the door with your leg in. I wish somebody, is it too much? No. See, if I give you Ecclesiastics and other things, it ain't gonna work because you're not an Ecclesiastic. You're not a Thessalonian. You're not, you understand me? I'm trying to talk to real people, really living your real life around. Let me tell you all this. Let me tell you all this story. Let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you what it feels like. If I can't help you with nothing, I can help you be comfortable in your own skin. I remember one day we was having our 20th annual BET party, Christmas party. It was a long time ago, but I was, you know. And I walked into the event because I had a brother sew this green and cream velvet and sateen wraparound smoking jacket and these long linen pants and all this kicky boot kicky. Y'all understand me? And my brother, who won't do hair on himself, but will dust mine for the gods, because I don't care about that. You can't do nothing in my head that I'm scared of somebody to do. This particular time, he had done a kind of a Nita Baker, Tony Braxton flat iron twisted. You know, I confuse people to be this tall and this broad and then have hair like that. Is he Indian? No. Is he Egyptian? No. Just a brother who don't care about what y'all got to say. And so I walked into the event with this particular ensemble on. And the way I've always, even when we were living in the project, I would come into the room and greet the guests at my fabulous party. It wouldn't be nothing but my three brothers sitting around watching Gilligan's Island. <laughs> <laughs> and then as the house got bigger, the wave got bigger. <laughs> And then I started to decide whether or not I was believing in myself enough to actually do that in public places. Right. When you got the guests at your house for a party, you're like, no, just sneak in and go to work. And, and God said, if you trust me, I dare you, I dare you to do it. So I was going into the entrance of this party, having this chocolate fur coat. It was chocolate, it was just one of them coats, coats, it was heavy, way more than I did. And I paid the guy $10, I said, just follow me, and you're gonna know what to do when I do what I do. And I was coming down the stairs, and I waved to somebody, hi, and the coat fell to the floor, and I kept coming, and they said, you dropped your and the guy ran and picked up the next thing. <laughs> People can't stand you when you can tolerate yourself. You understand me? You understand me? And when you get yourself good and good about being you, it's not just about putting it on when you go outside. It's about living on it when you're inside. It's about being able to seek the kingdom of God inside your own house inside your own skin. God wants to bless you. And the trick of the enemy is try to get you to think that God is working on something other than your greatest yeah. life. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It started with that apple talk, huh? Uh -huh. 
It started with that. Oh, you think he would really kill you? That is not what he said. He said, don't eat it so that I can keep you away from some things. Just like your parents tell you, don't touch the stove. It's hot. And you got to touch it anyway. Mama kissing it's hot. Now, I fell in the boo-boo. And she going, Lord, I told that baby not to do this. But I love you anyhow. God has said, I love you anyhow. Somebody ate an apple. Somebody did. Somebody killed their own brother. But that's not what this is about. What this is really about is that I love you bigger than your mistakes. I love you bigger than the last thing you did. I love you bigger than the struggle you in. I love you so much better than that. And so many of us are walking around with the best examples of ourselves left in our past, in our last relationship, in our last job. They killed you, and you left your best you on the job. Because you think it's some sort of commentary on you because they fired you. When it was just a matter of semantics. It was just about uh, first in, first out, last in, first. You understand that? And the person that you were dating did not know how to deal with somebody who loves them as much as you did. And so they sabotaged it. That doesn't mean you change the who you, you are in the next relationship. That means you realize I did the best I was can, can do and they weren't ready for it. Let me pack my bag, see? Let me pack my bags and take my best me onto the next house. That's why they come after you because they think you're going to leave the stuff behind. And when you take your stuff when you go to, they come behind you. Come on, baby, come back. Baby, 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 please, baby, please. I'm talking to myself. All right. <laughs> Seek first the best of what God has for you. Because he says in the book of Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, and they are plans to prosper you with a good life. That's what God said. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. That's what Paul told the Romans. In Deuteronomy and in Hebrews, we are told that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So God's got blessings for you, but you got to practice what you preach. You got to practice what you're asking for. If you want to see new heights, go mountain climbing first. If you want to see things sparkle, stay at the stars. If you want to see true love, spend a day loving on yourself. If you want to see joy, visit a maternal ward. If you want to see power, watch animals move. If you want to see peace, shut up and be quiet. That's peace. peace into your house, your phone won't ring, won't be nothing on the TV, and God says, shh, just be still and know that I am God. You done seen that on TV, but you done watched that rerun. God said, what's wrong that you can't turn the TV and the radio off and just concentrate on you? Just talk to me what you want, what you need. The things that you want from me, I have for you. All these things belong to you, but you got to seek first me within you. When you're driving, turn the radio off and just talk to God in the car. Those things coming at you are just distractions. Sure, they're going to try to cut you off. Sure, the enemy's going to try to send minions out to chop you off at your knees. But if you seek it first, the kingdom of God, and somebody cut you off, you pray for them. God bless you. God bless you. What is wrong with you that you got to drive that way? God bless you. Keep you. I'm so glad I ain't in the rush you in. God bless you. I'm so glad that I ain't stressed like you, worried like you, because I know worry will torment and kill you. And I came that you might have life and have a hey, hey. That's why I tell people, keep your radio turned to a station you like. So when the enemy come your way, you go, uh-oh, you almost got me. Boom. And turn on the music. God wants to bless you. And all the things you want belong to you. Can't nobody steal them. Can't nobody borrow them from you. Can't nobody else get signed for them. Hello, somebody. Your job is to seek first the fact that God loves you. And you got to know it with everything in you. Spend some time in the shower with you. Crack open them honey, vanilla, macadamia nut scrubs that you get. Crack open that thing that you got last Christmas. And you go, I would never, never try. Wait a minute. <laughs> I need somebody here to stay in the shower until the water run cold. Just with yourself. Ooh, girl. Girl, that's let Calgon, remember back in the day, Calgon used to take you away. Let Calgon take you away. Do what my mama did. Tell the children to go outside. Go outside. Now you say that to your kids, that's punishment. And if you take imagination from your kids, we're in trouble. We had a hopscotch on the floor and four squares and dodgeball and volleyball and huh, marbles and pickup sticks and double dutch. Throw them some things and see what they'll create, huh? They done figured out how to cheat on tests. They done figured it. They'll figure something out if you throw them a clothesline and two balls. But our job, our work is to seek first the kingdom of God. He says, then all the rest will be added to you. 
I gave it over to Jesus and I stopped worrying about it. Anybody stop worrying about something and the second you took your hand off of it? That's what you've got to remember. 